the new gen Glock 5 is out and a lot of people are excited. A lot of people were either disappointed or they could just care less, thinking that there's not really a lot of changes to the Generation 5 pistol. So I got in touch with my good friend Robbie Wheaton and we decided to take a look, an in-depth look at the differences with this pistol, with the Gen 4 and the Gen 3. And so we're going to go through a lot of details about what the changes are. And they are considerable. Uh, there's at least 20 changes to this pistol. Um, and so while a lot of people just think that it's just the lack of finger grooves and an ambidextrous slide stop, it goes a lot deeper than that. So I'm here with my good buddy Such today. We're going to be going through the Gen 3, the Gen 4, and the Gen 5 blocks, looking at the differences between them and uh, see what you know what parts can swap in and out what can't uh, you know what major changes they've really made to these guns as well as minor changes that a lot of guys wouldn't even pick up on and just kind of see what we can see what we can see with these guns now here we have the gen 5 the gen 4 and the gen 3 laid out on the table we're going to go into the details of each exterior change uh, one thing that you will notice is the copper barrel this is a wheat and arms barrel uh, but we're going to get into the stock barrel differences as well First thing we do is make sure all the guns are unloaded, magazine out, check the chamber. And they're all clear. So the biggest thing that everybody's talking about with the new Gen 5 Glock is the removal of the finger grooves on the front. You can see over here on the Gen 4, we've got our finger grooves. The new Gen 5, just the, the checkering on the front, no finger grooves. The stippling on the outside of the grip on the Gen 4 and the Gen 5, it appears to be exactly the same. No, uh, no significant change there. No, nothing doesn't really appear to be any shallower or deeper on either one. So then when we slide the Gen 3 in, you can see a significant difference in the frame with the stippling pattern on the grips, with the checkering on the front, and with the finger grooves being slightly larger on the Gen 3s than on the, the Gen 4s. On the Gen 3, you can see you've got the cutout in the front here, so if a mag gets stuck, you can strip it out. The Gen 4, they left it rounded across the bottom. On the Gen 5, they went back with, a, with an even deeper cutout here to be able to strip a stuck mag out, but then they also added the flared integral mag well. So you can see the flare on the mag well on the Gen 5 versus the flat frame on the Gen 4. So let's talk about some differences with the magazines. Here we have a Gen 3, a Gen 4, and a Gen 5 magazine. The Gen 3 has your single cutout here for your magazine release. The Gen 4, they've got your cutouts on both sides so you can reverse your magazine release. And the Gen 5 is the same. It has the cutouts on both sides to where you can reverse your magazine release. The Gen 4 magazine has this little cutout here. The Gen 5 does not. The metal on the Gen 4 shows through on the left side, where on the Gen 5 it's just plastic all the way around. But the Gen 5 magazines are metal lined, as well as the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. And then finally with the magazines, you can see that Glock has redesigned the base plate on the new Gen 5s compared to the Gen 4s. You can see the front on the, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 base plates are very squared off, where the front on the Gen 5 base plates are extended slightly and have a little tapered up on the front. Uh, and this fits into the cutout in the mag well, so you can, if the magazine gets stuck, you can strip it out of the Gen 5. For some reason, we didn't hit the record button when we were talking about the orange followers. That's one thing the Gen 5 has added. Uh, this helps to be able to see when the gun is clear. Also, when you're loading your magazine, uh, pushing down, you'll be able to see where the round count is. But as far as any differences between the two followers, they seem to be the same. All the Glock magazines are compatible even with the Gen 5 and that includes aftermarket mags like Magpul and ETS mags. So here on the left side of the pistol we've got our slide stop in its traditional location. The metal on the Gen 5 slide stop is quite a bit thicker than the metal on the Gen 4 slide stop and it also protrudes just a bit. One thing that we have noticed with it is we're getting some wear on the uh, slide stop pretty quickly around the edges. You can see some shiny spots where we've already worn through the finish. So it looks like they're not using the same finish on this part as they use on the uh, on the slides. So now on the, the right side of the pistol, again we have our slide stop and again you can see some wear around the edges on this already. On the Gen 5 and then over on the Gen 4, the absence of any slide stop on the right side of the pistol. One of the things we noticed between the Gen 3, the Gen 4, and the Gen 5 is the Picatinny rail slot on the bottom of the frame. 
The Gen 3 and the Gen 4, the rail slot is very consistent size-wise. When we move over to the Gen 5, they've significantly widened the rail slot. I'm sure this is to accommodate more lights and lasers that are out there on the market. One of the big things that we've been seeing online is the undercut on the Glock trigger guards. Uh, a lot of people are saying that Glock has uh, significantly undercut these trigger guards on the Gen 5s compared to the earlier models, and uh, that just isn't the case. There's uh, only a very, very tiny, almost immeasurable amount of difference between the Gen 5s and the earlier models. With a flat front strap here, it actually gives the illusion that this is deeper compared to the ones with the finger grooves. So on the Gen 4, they've got their manufacturer's marks on the frame up here at the top by the slide and the patent pending mark on the bottom of the grip here. On the new Gen 5s, the manufacturer's marks are not located on the top of the grip anymore. The manufacturer's marks and the patent have been moved to the bottom of the grip. Here we have the Gen 4 slide and you notice how it's kind of squared off on the front, which is traditional with all the all the Gen 3, Gen 4, 17s like this. When we move over to the Gen 5, they bullnosed the front of this slide from the factory, which helps with reholstering and stuff. So it's a, a pretty good feature that they've done with that. There's other models of Glock that already have this bullnose feature, but it, it's nice to see them incorporate this into the some of the full-size guns. On the frame to slide interface here, there's a, a nice clean edge to the Gen 5. They bullnosed the front of the slide, but they did not radius the frame where the frame meets the slide so the, the frame actually sticks out past this bullnose area here. On the Gen 4, the slide actually fits flush with the end of the frame. On the Gen 5, the slide protrudes about a sixteenth of an inch past the end of the frame. Now here we have the three firearms disassembled, the Gen 5, Gen 4, and Gen 3. We're going to go through each of the different parts, specifically with the Gen 4 and the Gen 5. We'll bring in parts from the Gen 3 uh, when it's applicable. And if you don't like it, stick it. One of the things that really stands out to me with the new Gen 5 Glocks is the finish on the slide. Uh, it, it's a real deep black finish compared to the charcoal grayish finish that you see on some of the older ones. Glock says it's a Tenifer type NDLC finish. Uh, so it's got a like a tenifer type base layer and then a NDLC layer over the top of that where the older Glock slides were melanited or tenifered or whatever type finish they were using on those. The metal prep overall on the, the Gen 5 slides is vastly, vastly superior to the, to the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. On the Gen 3s and Gen 4s, you can see pitting in the metal uh, where it just wasn't finished well. Uh, where these look like they've been finished on a surface grinder to give you a really, really super slick finish and appearance with the metal. So as you can see with a closer look with the camera here, how smooth the metal is. There's no, there's no pits or anything under the finish. Then here we have a Gen 4 Glock slide, and you can see the, the pitting in the metal where it just wasn't, it wasn't surface ground to give you a really clean finish. So with the lettering on the Gen, with the earlier Glocks, it was pressed or stamped in. And it, what it did is it raised metal around the letters. So if you run your finger down the, down the side of one of the older slides, you can feel the letters impressed or stamped into the slide. Where on the new Gen 5 Glocks, all of the lettering is engraved or machine cut into the side of the slide. First, we're gonna start out with the frames. This is the Gen 5, Gen 4, and Gen 3, and we're gonna look at the details. So here we have the, the Gen 5, the Gen 4, and the Gen 3 Glocks. And the only real significant difference between these three frames from your forward frame rails forward is on the Gen 3, where it uses a different recoil assembly, and this area is, is machined quite a bit differently in here than compared to the, the 4s and the 5s. On the Gen 4 frame, you actually have frame rails, molded plastic frame rails here and here. So here again from the side, you can see you've got the plastic frame rail that's molded into the frame on the Gen 4, and on the Gen 5, it's completely smooth to the rear of your steel frame rails. On the Gen 4 frame, you've got your little flat spring here that holds your takedown lever in place. On the Gen 5, that spring is omitted. You've just got a, now you've got a big empty pocket right here. Also, your takedown lever if you can see with the frames here, is about a quarter of an inch farther forward on the Gen 4 than it is on the Gen 5. The reason for this is the Gen 5 uses a different locking lug assembly on the bottom of the barrel than the Gen 4. Your Gen 4 barrels will not work on your Gen 5 pistols on the model Glock 17. 
the Glock 19s, the barrel locking lugs are the same. So you can swap out your, your Gen 4 barrels or your Gen 3 barrels into your, into your Gen 5 Glock. The last difference is on the Gen 5, instead of having the flat spring like you have here on the Gen 4, there's actually a coil spring under your takedown lever. Here's the little coil spring on the Gen 5 pistol under your takedown lever. So what you have to do to take this out, you have to depress this spring and then depress the takedown lever to get it out of the pistol. So this coil spring setup is very similar to what you see in the Glock 43s. And the Glock 43s use this same type setup. One thing that we did note, the, uh, the takedown levers on the, both the Gen 4 and the Gen 5 pistols are, they are the same width and the frames in this area are within about three thousandths of each other on the same, as far as the width goes. Just to the rear of the takedown lever on the Gen 4 and the Gen 3 pistols, you can see you've got this big plastic block inside the frame. On the Gen 5s, that's missing, and you've just got this little tab area down in here now. So you've got your cutout here for your ambi slide stop, and then also on the side of the frame here, you've got your, your little catch where your slide stop bottoms out. On the back of the frames here, you can see the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 are very similar. Then when we get over to the Gen 5, the Gen 5, there's a little bump back here on the back, and then there's also this protrusion that sticks up off of the back of the, uh, the, back of the frame. And here you can see on the Gen 3 and the Gen 4, the back plates are the same. And then over here to the Gen 5, you've got this big cutout that is significantly different than it is on the, the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. So here we have some different slide stops. This is a Gen 3 or Gen 4 slide stop, a standard configuration as it comes from Glock. And this is a Gen 3 or Gen 4 slide stop, uh, extended model. And then over here we have our Gen 5 slide stop, the ambidextrous one, which is quite a bit different. With the, the ambidextrous slide stop in the Gen 5 Glock, it's got a, the coil spring on the front here versus the flat wire spring that you have on the, the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. This coal spring, which is similar to the setup that you have in the Glock 43, makes this pistol quite a bit more difficult to disassemble than, than the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. On the Gen 5, you've got your cutouts on both sides for your ambi slide stop, where on the Gen 3 and the Gen 4, it's just your single side. So here we have a set of takedown pins from a Gen 4 and a Gen 5 Glock. The rear ejector housing pins, the plastic ones, they're the same. This pin here is omitted on the Gen 5. The big difference is on your, on your locking block pin here on the front. The Gen 4, it has a deep narrow groove on either side where the Gen 5 pin has a shallow wide groove. And one thing that we did note as well is all of these pins are a different finish than the slide, so they're not doing the DLC coating on these pins like they do on the slide. All right, so here we have our three different trigger bars, a Gen 3, a Gen 4, and a Gen 5. Uh, some small differences between the the threes and the fours with a little bump here, no bump here. Um, those are really the kind of the big significant ones that that stand out to most people. Uh, the really big differences that we see are when we go from the the Gen 4 to the Gen 5 trigger bar. So again, we've got the bump here on the Gen 4. There's no bump on the Gen 5. You've got your little tab down here for your trigger return spring on the Gen 4. As you can see over here on the Gen 5, there's not one on this trigger. And again, from a different angle. You can see you've got your tab here for your trigger return spring, and then on the, the Gen 5 Glock, there's no tab for a trigger return spring. <laughs> on the new Gen 5, the trigger is very narrow at the top in this area uh, to clearance for your, your slide stop, where on the Gen 4, your trigger is it's probably an eighth of an inch wider. They had to narrow this area to be able to get the ambidextrous slide stop to work in the pistol without taking material out of the frame. The new Gen 5 pistol, because it is so narrow at the top this way, is gonna prevent you from putting any of the aftermarket triggers that are on the, that are out there in your new Gen 5 Glock until someone comes out with a, a trigger that is specific for the Gen 5 Glocks. Wheaton Arms. <coughs> All right, so let's walk through these ejector housings. This is a Gen 4 Glock and the Gen 5 Glock. The Gen 4 Glock, you've got a, a pretty narrow ejector coming up through here that's bent in. When we get over here to the Gen 5 Glock, they've completely redesigned the ejector shape. It's a, you can see at the tip, it's a lot wider. It's a lot lower, so you're gonna get a lot more engagement on your case for positive uh, ejection. And then also it's got the, a little twist in it to cant the top in again, to give you more engagement on your case during extraction and ejection. And again, from the top, you can see the the significant angle that the, the Gen 5 has been kicked over to give you more case engagement during extraction and ejection compared to the Gen 4s. 
This is where your trigger return spring goes on the, your Gen 3s and Gen 4s. And as you can see, it's just a big empty cavity. On the new Gen 5 Glock, you've got your, your trigger return assembly is still inside of here, uh, very similar to the, to the Glock 43s. The Gen 4 and the Gen 5 Glocks, they both use the same connector. Here we have the Gen 4 striker assembly and the Gen 5 striker assembly. The first thing we notice is the firing pin tip itself. On the Gen 4s is kind of arrowhead shaped and is flat. Where on the Gen 5, the new Gen 5 is more of a rounded shape, as you can see. So here you can see the cutouts for the striker assembly. Those are significantly different on the Gen 4 and the Gen 5. The firing pin assembly or the striker assembly out of the Gen 5 Glock and out of the Gen 4 Glock, these parts will not retrofit with one another. <laughs> okay, we've got our Gen 4 and our Gen 5 locking blocks here. You can see we've got the, the cutout here for our third pin on the Gen 4. On the Gen 5, there's a little small cutout here, but it's not enough to be able to retrofit the Gen 5 over into the Gen 4. This area here is more squared and quite a bit thicker compared to this side where you've got more of a, more of a little tapered area under where your, your pin goes through. So when we flip the lug over on the Gen 4 here, you can see it's, it's pretty thick all the way out. Uh, there's just a little step here at the front on the corners. And when we move over to the Gen 5, the lug is really thin here and there's a big step that's cut out on both sides. On the bottom side on the Gen 5, the locking block portion right here is very steep and comes almost to a point here. And then when we look over at the Gen 4, this locking block area here is quite a bit thicker. So just to show you guys that Such does shoot his guns, he brought a dirty one to use for this review. <laughs> I think everybody knows I shoot my guns. <laughs> now clean them? No. <laughs> So let's go over some of the differences between the, the Gen 4 and the Gen 5 Glock slides. One of the first things that we notice is the striker safety plunger area. On the Gen 4, it's got the nice round little hole with the, the striker safety that everybody's familiar with. When we move over to the Gen 5, the Gen 5 uses a striker safety that's very similar to the Glock 43. So here we have our striker safety plunger for the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 Glocks. It's round. Here is the new one for the Gen 5. It's very similar to the to the Glock 43s. They won't retrofit into a 43. The, the cuts are different on the on the 17 than they are on the 43. It's, it's a little different. And again, from the side, you can see your safety plunger for the Gen 3 and the Gen 4s compared to the new Gen 5. Here we have a Gen 4 and a Gen 5 extractor. They're, they're very similar to one another. There's a couple of minute differences, but not anything significant enough to really discuss. So then when we get to the end of the slide, the little loop where your guide rod sits you notice on the Gen 4 is very thin here. On the Gen 5, they've beefed this area up quite a bit. Here we have a Gen 3, a Gen 4, and a Gen 5 guide rod. Overall length between these two are the same. The Gen 5 guide rod is about a quarter of an inch longer than the Gen 3 or the Gen 4. And the reason for this is the different locking lug assembly that the Glock 17 Gen 5 uses compared to the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. So we've got a Gen 4 and a Gen 5 Glock barrel here. The Gen 3 and 4 barrels will not retrofit into a, a Gen 5 Glock. Uh, the biggest reason is the locking lug on the bottom of the barrel. The Glock 17 Gen 5s use a Glock 19 style locking lug, which is significantly different from the, uh, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 Glock 17s. The Gen 5 Glock 17 barrel has a nice deep recessed crown compared to the Gen 3 and Gen 4 barrels. Now, one thing about that I said on my initial review is that the barrel on the Gen 5 went back to the traditional rifling, and that's not the case. All the Glock generations are at the hexagonal grooves. Uh, but from what I understand, because it's the, called the Marksman barrel, those hexagonal grooves have been improved. Now, that's just from what I understand. There's not really a lot of information on the Glock website. Okay, one thing that we failed to mention was the back sight. Uh, there is a difference between the two. This is the Gen 4, has the same polymer, uh, squared off or field gold type back sights. If you look at the Gen 5 on the left, the lines are thinner and it's opened up just a little bit. Uh, actually, I like the Gen 5 sights a little better. Just seemed like I could really pick up that front dot. Also, you notice this little tab right here above the beaver tail that's absent on the Gen 4.
Now with the Gen 5 Glock, you can use your existing Gen 3 and Gen 4 barrels. Uh, this is a Wheaton Arms match barrel. It is one of the threaded barrels. And we're going to install it and we're going to do a little shooting just to demonstrate that it works in this pistol. So let's make sure the gun's unloaded. We're going to drop the magazine, check the chamber, and it's empty. Pull the trigger, slide back, pull your tabs down. Recoil spring and barrel out. Remove your thread protector if you are using one of the threaded barrels. Slide the barrel in. Of course, this is just regular stuff, but just to show it in case someone's watching that's never done it. We've got it ready. Now let's go ahead and put our thread protector on. Now we're going out to the range and check it out. And we're going to go through some Freedom Munitions. Uh, this is the Pro Match. It's the 135 XAP round. And uh, we're going to do our testing with it. And I also want to thank Freedom Munitions for sending the ammo and the 5% discount offered to Such uh, viewers. And that's SOOTCH00 at FreedomMunitions.com. Visit WheatonArms.com for all your aftermarket Glock parts and accessories. No, I don't care for that either. Sounds like some marketing person. Mm. Visit WheatonArms.com for... <sighs> <laughs> if you're looking for Glock parts, check us out at WheatonArms.com. We've got a complete line of barrels as well as our triggers and other parts available for the Glocks. And we're working on uh, new triggers and barrels for the Glock 17 Gen 5s right now. We already have the Glock 19 Gen 5 barrels available. And uh, triggers for those will be coming soon as well. So I want to thank Robbie Wheaton for taking the time to go through all the details. Guys, I know it was probably more than you wanted to know. Uh, but at least you got an in-depth look at the differences and the changes from the Gen 4 and the Gen 3. Uh, and you can go by WheatonArms.com and he does a lot of... Glock support parts, whether it's barrels, triggers, um, even guide rods and different things. And so again, I just want to appreciate Robbie for taking the time. Thank you, Robbie Wheaton. <laughs> be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. people yep. that are whining because they took the batteries off. Okay. I mean, there's a group, yep. so we don't want to alienate them. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> we'll bring the Gen 3 in when it's applicable. How about that? Applicable. You still said completely. We're going to start out with the frames. Again, the Gen 5, Gen 4, and Gen 3. Gem. We have the Gem. Is that Jimmy or James? All right, James and John. This little tit that sticks up off of the back of the frame. And yes, I, I, I said I called it a tit. You can't call it. <laughs> never hear they won't listen to another thing that's said on the video. Is it tit? Duh. Sorry. <laughs> what am I questioning you for? Okay. Take two. So before my expert decided to Y'all contradict <laughs> You're just totally went brain dead. <laughs> Shut down. <laughs> it's the suit effect. Oh. Take that, Glock haters.
And as you can see down on the inside here. I can see your hands. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, hold on. Let me see it. No, I'm good. I just switch hands. Your amphibious eye. That's right. I'm breathing through my ears. <laughs> See what that noise was? <laughs> Thought you had a compensator on your mouth. Oh, 